Hello. So I'm going to do a quick tour around the garden. Um, it's October the 12th, 22. So the garden isn't looking at its best because it's getting near the end of the season now. But I'm going to sort of walk around, um, having a look at what's doing well, what I don't like, what I want to change next year. So first of all, I'm going to start off with this bed over here. For me, it looks very confused. And the reason for that is um, earlier on in the year, we had a drop curb done out the front of the house. So I had to move this camera up serifera from outside the front and planted it in the back. It has transplanted half okay. It's looking a bit rough. It's, it is pushing out new spears. Um, the leaves are drying off, but why that's been transplanted, it's sort of a bit of a mix mash. Um, you know, I have sort of big leaf to moose behind it. And then I sort of have the palms and the sort of more arid looking plants around it. So next year that's got to be fought, thinned out, probably lose the moosa, um, maybe to another part of the garden. The problem is this part of the garden is one of the main things I see when I look out the house. And up until this year, it's all been full of bananas, cannas, all the sort of tender tropicals. So for six to eight months of the year, I'm looking at bare patches. And realistically, you know, for me, this garden's for the whole year, not just for parts of it. So I'm trying to slowly put more and more evergreens into this place. So what's likely to happen is, you know, the salvias will come out, which are now looking a bit leggy. Um, the cannas and bananas probably won't be in here. It's definitely food for thought, this area. But I like the idea more of probably the sort of arid look but that would that would take me a lot of work because i've spent years of basically turning this soil into real good soil um full of manure compost and everything like that feeding it then when i've put the um camera ops in and that small bra here um i've had to really try and change the soil type and it just doesn't suit both types of plants you know some that are quite happy to hardly get any water and some that just demand loads of it so that's definitely a big change that i'm trying to make next year then going around this way this part here is a typical case of planting years ago when small and not really allowing a room for what you've got so the pittosporum and the laurel have obviously given me the sort of protection and seclusion that I'm looking for but it's given me no room at all for the palm that went in probably let's say about eight years ago with less than one foot of trunk so that's looking cramped so I've got to deal with that maybe trim the laurel right back um, I think the pittosporum is going to be trimmed right back and to give more room for the loquat in the middle as well and also there is so much plant in there that underneath gets hardly any sort of um, water at all and it's so dry and so thick of roots that I struggle to underplant it. So I've probably got to look at trimming the bottom of the leaves off some of these plants, these bigger shrubs, so I can get a bit more light to the bottom because it does get a lot of sun this side. Um, and then I can probably get away with planting sort of more arid type plants. The border is at its thinnest point there, which is about a meter wide, which also gives me problems but definitely something that absolutely drives me crazy so i need to work on next year sort of going around here this area here um, is my walkway through to the back gazebo now these two pergola type things is what i call my water gates so they've got three misters in each which is fixed to the mains tap supply so during summer I can turn them misters on, which the kids absolutely love. It doesn't really water anything. It just gives that sort of humid type feeling, a really fine spray and the kids sort of love it. So basically there's a micro irrigation pipe that just goes up the side of the post and then into these here, there is three little misters and they will shoot a fine spray. So this, becomes a bit of a jungle walkway through to the back. <clears throat> now this area here, 
I'm kind of happy with. I sort of like the structural plants, they're getting to a good size. The one thing that is coming out and will be either replanted or uh, split and got rid of is this um, Formium Yellow Wave. It just drives me crazy. It hangs over the lawn. Every time I try to cut the grass, it sort of gets caught by the lawnmower. Um, and it is actually from the house, one of the main focal points where I actually want the palms to be the focal points. So I think that's gonna come out and replaced with some smaller plants. So the specimens behind it are the things you see, not, well, just looks like a yellow blob to me. So that's got to change. <clears throat> On this side, this is a border that is ready to be sort of replanted and everything like that. What's happened over the years is the Fatsia and the variegated laurel, the Akuba, sort of basically took over and was had grown out right to the lawn. So I've had to cut them back, which has left me real bare patches underneath. So I've decided I'm going to thin that right out for next year, take all the bottom growth off them palms at the back so they look more specimen-like, and then underplant it with some more evergreens or something like that. Sort of going around this way, panning around. Down here we have a Camarops humulus. And this does not look good and it hasn't looked good for about five years because I moved it from a job that we was doing. It was growing too near to a customer's um, trampoline and they wanted it to come out. Got a large root ball, dug it up, planted it and it has sulked for years. But it has started to now push out some nice new growth. So hopefully next year it can finally look like the specimen plant that it was planted in this area to be. So going around that way is the Tetrapanix papyrifer. And now that's starting to look a bit sad for itself because we've had a couple of nights now, probably about five degrees, four or five degrees Celsius. And um, it's getting near time to start dropping its leaves. Now, this standard looking Tetrapanix has been planted here for probably nine years, maybe eight, nine years. And in all that time, in my garden at least, it's only pushed out one pup, and that's this one here. Now I'm a bit torn to whether to let it grow like that one, or to take it out. I'm gonna sort of make up my mind in spring. I think once it gets high enough, it will be fine because I'll be able to walk under it. But at the moment, it's causing a sort of major obstacle through the path which I'm gonna to need to sort of address as well. So going back around this way, so this area hasn't worked out very well this year because this was underplanted with um, pink chinas and regersia and all stuff like that. And it's just been too dry. Um, they've not liked it. They do get sun for probably three or four hours a day and especially the pink china you know they didn't like it under there so that is definitely something that i'm replanning um i'm doing next year and as you can see as well this is what happens when you have all these tracky carpets you have to weed them like absolute crazy every year and i don't like to throw them away so i have pots and pots and pots of tracky carpet seedlings that are just um, growing on bigger and bigger. Now this palm here, this Trachycarpus fortunae, and it's the Princeps hybrid. So underneath, it's got these silvery type leaves, which was planted there to complement the Astelia silver shadow, which is on the other side. So as that gets taller, you'll see at the bottom of the leaves this silver and you'll also see below you the silver leaf of the Astelia. So walking around here and I'm going to duck down. Coming around here, this is the next section that's getting a lot of work done next year. So that area there used to have a, like a barrel water feature 
and I took it out because it was slowly rotting away. So I brought a load of ferns to replace it. We're just trying to find the right sort of water feature to go there um, in the middle of the two tree ferns. And then all these potted ferns that you can see here have been brought to be planted around in this area. Now, a lot of these ferns are very sort of um, drought tolerant ferns, being because the tree ferns have got such a root structure underneath, everything else is struggling a little bit. I've tried digging around there and it is just a huge map of fern um, roots. Hence why the tree ferns are doing really well, but it makes it really hard to underplant them. Sort of around this side, we've got a few tender things that have got to go, go in soon. Obviously the uh, Swiss cheese plant at the back there. And um, there's a couple of palms and bits that have to go into the greenhouse. And then around here, a very leggy Fatsia polycarpa. So I've got to decide whether I'm gonna prune that back to encourage this lower growth here. Now this one was grown from seed by me, I think probably about maybe eight years ago. Really struggling to remember now. Um, so it's done really well, but is now searching for the light and it's got a bit leggy. And above me is the Tetrapanix. Not going to be doing anything for that, apart from maybe putting some sort of tender bromeliads or something on this trunk to make a bit more of a feature of that next year. This area here is getting ready to be replanted. Now this had um, loads of Xanthodesia Hercules and you can see they're just coming back. Every year they do absolutely brilliant for me, but this year with it being so dry, they've just struggled like crazy. I had some there and then you can see I've also got some here. Now, they're just coming back now, which isn't ideal. They are hardy, but they will get hit back quite bad by the frost and look quite messy through the year, but they will come back. But these would normally be at this time of year, probably about five foot high, maybe, I haven't, something like that. So hopefully they'll come back a lot better probably have to dig some of this soil out a bit which is really hard with all these palm trees but um, I think I need to improve the soil around here or just change it to more sort of hardy evergreen type planting so going back a bit that's just polycarpa in a pot looking for our home really because I didn't know where to put it so over here we have Nandina domestica really good evergreen shrub for a UK garden um, then next to it let's go down here a bit we have Mahonia soft caress so generally in this garden I've used a lot of hardy evergreens now you may think that a garden with specimens this sort of size has cost a lot of money it has cost money but not due to the size of the plants. What that's cost me is time. These have, uh, these have been in probably nearly 12 years, maybe? No, uh, 2011 we moved in and I've slowly added the plants since then. Now, just to let you know, that palm there was brought with three meters of trunk for 99p off eBay. A, a builder was removing it from outside a restaurant, put it on there, no one bid on it. They dug it up, we went and picked it up, planted it there. And it looked terrible for about two, three years. Now it's looking absolutely cracking and is one of the main focal points of the garden. Um, this waggy, this was brought about, I don't know, maybe seven years ago, with probably a foot of trunk. I think I probably paid about 30 pounds at the time. And next to it is a really large Camerops humulus. This was an absolute bargain off eBay with probably over a meter of trunk. Um, I think I paid 67 pounds for that. So I haven't spent as much money as maybe this garden looks like it's had. The palm trees that you're looking at there were brought 
lots of them with maybe a foot of trunk to a meter of trunk and they have just caught up the big one that was brought with three meters of trunk going around this side that palm was planted with less than a foot of trunk this palm was planted I think my wife brought it for me for about 30 quid with a foot of trunk so it just takes time and the way I do it is I plant these evergreen plants and over the years it's had lots of tender stuff to get the height you know you can put large canners in there and stuff like that and, mo and the mooses and stuff like that just to give you the height until these other things mature now one thing I will say is and this is a prime example you need to give these plants room general rule is if you're planting a trachycarpus as it gets bigger it's going to need sort of six foot of spread it's going to need three foot all around either side of the trunk that is going to take a good few years before it looks good unless i prune that laurel right back but then i lose a lot of my overhead protection so working my way around here this area is probably going to have another water feature it used to have an arbor so we're going to look at something like that for next year and um, work out what to do with that bit now for anyone that's looking at the bamboos and thinking that's pseudosassa and it's one of the most invasive bamboos about they've been in many years and they've never run they had water butts put into the ground about two foot deep and it has contained them i do have to watch that nothing ever jumps over the top i kind of regret it now because they used to look really good either side of the arbor but now that's gone they're probably a sort of another thing that i may have to change moving around here tree ferns one there and one there Thank you very much, dog, for barking away. So the back tree fern was more expensive because it has got about seven foot of trunk, but the smaller one was brought when you could buy tree ferns for about 20 pound a foot. So that wasn't too bad in its time. This Washington Robusta, well, I brought it quite a few years ago and I've never took it out of the pot. It's been sad every year and it's dying to go in the ground, but I haven't really got the space. It hasn't, you know, it's another thing that I'd have to try and protect in the colder winters. So um, that will probably get potted up and maybe let go in the future. Um, heading round, this is mainly fat seers. Um, we've got quite a few spiders webs in here and then we've got this fat seer polycarpa, Edward Needham form. This is actually the lower growth. The trunk is sort of higher right up there. Then we've got this Schefflera rhododendrifolia, which is about to flower or has flowered. I can't really see from here. Um, last year it did have seeds. I went out to collect them and it was windy the day before and they all blew off and I couldn't find them. So maybe this year I can get some seeds off it. I did get seeds off the fat seer polycarp red with needham form last year and I have got them grown in my greenhouse. They are very slow, but they took very easily because they were fresh seed. It's basically just underplanted with hardy, hardy evergreen uh, grasses. The regersia has not done well this year. It is very shaded, but it's because it's raised this part of the bed it's just drying too quick so that will be changed whereas I think the year before it looked absolutely stunning because it was probably a lot wetter summer um, at the back there they're just some potted gingers um, the tender ones Alpina so heading back round most of this garden is hardy and is evergreen to look as good as it can for most of the year i totally appreciate that a lot of 
gardeners that do this type of thing love the big bananas love the canners love the cold cases and i love all that too but over the years i've changed the garden to have less and less of that so when i look out of the bifolds at the back of the house it sort of um looks good most of the year not as good as it does in summer obviously but as best as i can get it looking and just another thing for future conversation when i did this garden i did this circle in this patio now the idea of that is that here is going to be another gazebo with a seating area we're just waiting for some work to be done on the back of the house i'm probably gonna have to have some scaffolding around the extension on the house to do some rendering so until that's done and the scaffolding's out the way then this gazebo with a thatched roof or straw type tropical roof is going to go there to sort of help frame the garden So that's my basic first sort of walking talking video of my garden any questions please ask and um, i hope you liked it thank you very much